Hey friends, you are crafting with Kim Byers and today we are going to do all things gardening. So I um, went to Target actually um, and I've seen these at different stores and stuff but these are just happened to be at the dollar spot and so um, I picked up like the little vegetable tags and I picked up a, a cute birdhouse and several different pots and all kinds of things. Um, what else did I get? I got like a trowel and some other things and I thought it would be really fun to make a gift basket for my mom just for fun um, and we're going to put vinyl and stuff on those and then um, I wanted to put some things on things for myself and so I thought I would give you a little tour of my garden so let's just be clear I'm not a gardener yet yet so I um, just planted some things for the very first time this year and so it's all sort of coming together <laughs> So it's a very tiny garden, but I still want to be able to label everything. Um, and so I'm going to break out my Cricut and we're going to create some really cute labels. And I got these again for a dollar at the dollar spot. Um, and so I was really excited about that, but I thought we could cute them up. And then I'm actually thinking I might spray them with a clear acrylic so that, um, you know, they stay well in the weather and that kind of thing. So we're just going to do a lot of fun stuff today. Just a lot of fun, simple, easy things with vinyl today. Okay, so let's go ahead and get those things going. And by the way, if you are new here, you are crafting with Kim Byers. And I would love for you to hit that subscribe button and join me for all my future videos. Let's go. Okay, so this is Smokey. This is our um, giant schnauzer. And she's going to take us on a tour of the garden. What do you think, girl? You want to take us on a tour? Okay, let's go. So we are going to go out to my very tiny and no one pick on me, okay? <laughs> so these are my strawberries and I thought it would be really fun to get, um, you know, a little skewer or the little, you know, gardening sticks and put in my strawberries. How fun would that be? And now I just got all the stuff in the ground, guys. So, I mean, it, yeah, it, I literally like a day or two ago. Okay, so this isn't my garden, but I'm so excited about these guys. They're blooming. This is my jasmine. So cute, right? Okay, so these are my watermelons and we are going to try and grow them vertically. <laughs> I'll let you know how that goes. But so I stuck the little, um, you know, the little thing that comes with it in the ground, but I wanna put some cute ones around it. Okay, so this is one of like I don't know, 12 pepper plants, and they're all different kinds. My husband has a thing about pepper plants. So we're gonna get those in the ground. But then okay, so when we lived in Ohio, um, we fell in love with um, pineapple tomatoes. And we haven't been able to find them since we've gotten down south. So these are um, some that a friend of ours brought down from Ohio, and I'm so excited to put them in my little garden. And these are my blueberry bushes, and I am excited about the abundance of blueberries on these this year. And then this is my romaine. It's in a really small raised bed, um, and I, you know, just got it in the ground literally a day and a half ago. So it doesn't look amazing yet, but it's going to. It's going okay, to. Okay, and so before we go back into the craft room, I want to show you um, a big investment that <laughs> I made this year and I got a composter. So I'm going to take you down and show you my composter and I'll show you my apple trees. I have four apple trees. Okay, so it's it's dusk and so the bugs <laughs> are trying to carry me away. But I wanted to show you, um, these are my apple trees behind me um, and I could turn this around so that you guys could see them in focus. But I have four. I have two Gala and two Fuji. And now I'm going to show you my composter. Okay, so this is it. So it is, um, I am ecstatic about it. It kind of looks a little bit like a robot. <laughs> but I bought this one in particular because it has a drainage port and I'm not sure I have to swivel it a little bit. It has a drainage port that a lot of the other ones don't, so you can get compost tea out of it. Um, and it is full, so I am not going to show <laughs> you guys inside, but basically, you know, you put all of your organic things from your kitchen and then leaves and twigs and stuff like that, and then um, you just, you know, flip it every day. And then you can take the compost tea out the bottom. It is phenomenal. I, I'm really excited about this. As a beginning gardener and just trying to figure everything out, um, I, this is one of my, you know, kind of 
excitement things. And I want to get a bunch of raised beds, but I don't know what kind to get. So if anyone has any recommendations on that, um, I would love to hear about it because even though I've gone ahead and planted um, for this year, um, actually for the spring, I'm going to plant this fall. I'm going to do Okay, so let's go back into the craft room and we will get everything together. And um, I am going to do five different things today. Okay, so here we are back on the craft table and these are some of the things that we're going to be working with today. I actually have so much that I couldn't put it all <laughs> on the table. So I have these darling little flower pots. I have a really sweet um, little ceramic birdhouse and I think this was either three or five five on the target dollar spot and then i have this uh, garden trowel i just loved it because well for one the color um but also because it's polka dot and i have a real thing about stripes and polka dots you guys who craft with me know i have a thing about both of those and then this is actually like a little indoor uh, flower stand so i'm going to use that um, in the studio so i'm going to put the pot on it and then I have um, smart vinyl in two different colors. And then I actually have um, some other vinyl that I'm thinking about infusing into this, which is like a green. Now, both of these are permanent. Um, and I thought those were appropriate, especially for my little um, birdhouse, which I will be hanging outside. And then I also have um, little garden stakes and they come, uh, these were a dollar and there's three to the pack and they come in two different colorways. And I'm going to be um, spraying these with this clear acrylic coating just to help them to stay nice um, out in the weather. And I have my uh, transfer tape and some alcohol to clean my surfaces. And I of course have my Cricut uh, Explore 3. And so we're gonna be using Smart Vinyl on this guy today. And I have a couple other little things too that we'll go over as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and hop over to Cricut Design Space and I'll show you our designs. Okay, so here we are in Cricut Design Space, and I've gone ahead and pulled in the designs that we're going to be working with today. So this, um, these four right here, Be Nicer Leaf, I Will Survive, I Beg Your Garden, and Blame It on My Roots. I just um, designed these and put them into the shop, so you can grab those over in the Etsy shop. And if you are on uh, my email list, you received one of these for free this week. So if you've not signed up for my email, make sure you hop down in the description and check that out. I would love to have you guys. Okay, so over here on the left, this little box um, is just the shape that is kind of indicative of the front of the flower pot that I'm going to be putting this on. And so if you ever craft with me, you know that I love to go over into shapes and pick something that is close to the substrate that I'm going to put the design on. And then I like to change it to the color of the design. So my flower pot is black and I have another one that is like a cream or an off-white color. Um, so I like to do that and just make sure that my design is going to fit nicely and then readjust it depending on how large I want it to be, you know, on that surface. So that's what I've done here. Um, and then down here, these are my little vegetable skewers. So I chose a font that was very simple. Um, if you look over into layers, you can see um, the one that I chose. And so we can look up here too. It's DTC Natural Sands. I thought in such a small area, um, it would be best to use a very simple font, something also very, you know, legible. So I did one for strawberries and watermelon, my pineapple tomatoes, romaine, peppers, zucchini, broccoli, grape, tomato, blueberries. So these are the, the you know, my garden is very tiny, um, but so these are the things that are currently there in my garden. So I wanted to make the little skewers for those. And I um, also might make some that just say, love you or things like that so when i give the gift of the flower pot i could put the little skewer in the top that would be super cute i think i'm gonna have to add those okay and so then the other thing that you saw on the craft table was the little birdhouse and so i just did this in the same font because i was kind of loving the font it was just so cute um and then of course these designs up here you can bring them in into upload if you've never uploaded a design i'll put a little video up above showing you how to do that it's super simple okay so that's kind of the ins and outs of what we're making today oh and i should um i think i i mentioned this to you i have six different colors of the little vegetable skewers and so that's what those different colors are i did choose to make all of these the same color simply because i wanted to make the cut you know easy just being able to weed everything out easily 
but I like having the colors here so I can see that the light blue that I chose is actually going to work on each one of those. Um, and by the way, if you're ever concerned about your colors, like did I pick the same blue each time, you can go up into color sync and see all of the colors that you have chosen there. And of course, I'm going to end up hiding all of these colors because they're just my background image. I'm not actually cutting them. So I'll end up with three colors. So I'll have the green, um, kind of a rich blue, and then a light blue. All right, and so I'm gonna be using my Explore 3 because I'm gonna use Smart Materials today, but you can use your, um, any Explore, you could use your Maker, you could use your Joy. Okay, so now that I've hidden all of my shapes and so I'm just left with my text, I'm going to go ahead and make it. Okay, so I'm left with three mats in three different colors. We can space these out a little bit more if you want to. Um, just to give you some area, you know, to cut between them. And so if we look at the next one um, and then looking here, so again, the same here, I just want a little bit more space. Okay, so I just spaced these out just a little bit because candidly, um, my eyes are not as good as they used to be and I want a little bit more space between them. If you have amazing eyes, don't worry about it. This is going to cut perfectly and you're going to be able, you know, to weed them out just great. Um, I just wanted a little more space in between each one. Okay, so this is vinyl, so we don't need to mirror image it we just need to go ahead and send it over um, to the machine and when we get back over to the craft table I'll show you how to put the smart material in the Explorer 3 um, if not you could just use a normal mat like you normally would in whichever machine you're using okay so now we can hit continue and we can select our base material so we're going to be using um, smart vinyl permanent so I already have it started here. If you don't see this in your uh, favorites, you can always go into Browse All Materials and look through the vinyl options. So we're going to choose this one. And now we are ready to hop back over to the craft table. Okay, so here we are back on the craft table and we're getting ready to cut all of our designs. And so what we're going to do is two different colors of smart vinyl and then we are going to use a green on a mat. So for my smart materials, what I did is I have this little tray um, which is very much worth it. If you guys have an Explore 3 or a Maker 3 and you've not tried the tray, it's worth it. So this is how you use it. So these little guides here, um, you just use those to slide them up onto um, small little guides that just keep everything sturdy. And so then you lay your material in and just pull it through or push it through and then it will go right underneath these guides and once you get it to that spot then we're going to hit load and so it is actually measuring to make sure that you have enough material to cut your design Okay, and so we're ready to go ahead and hit cut. Oh goodness, and I should have shown you guys, I'll do it on the next one, um, but whenever you're done with your cut, you just use this trimmer bar and you slide it all the way across and it will cut away um, your sheet to make sure that you have a nice clean edge for the next time that you use it in your machine. Love this feature. Okay, so now before I take it out or hit the unload button, I'm just going to run the blade across and cut away my material. And so see, perfect cut for next time. So now that all of our designs are cut out, the first thing that I like to do is to cut away any excess. So if there's any little corners or little snippets of material that I can save and put in my scrap folder, I want to get those off first. And then I'm going to be using um, my new weeding tool today. So this guy, I just got it a couple of weeks ago. I'm really excited about it because it has multiple ends. And so you see there's different kinds. So there's the blade and then there's two different types of little hooks. And then I am really loving this needle nose piece. So I'm going to be using this today to weed out all of my designs and I'll make sure and link that below in case you guys haven't seen that yet. Okay. So first things first though, we want to take our scissors and we want to cut away any pieces that we think we can salvage and I do have some on each of these.
Okay, so now I'm ready to use my weeding tool and I know what you're thinking, she cut away some tiny little spots, but I cannot tell you how many times I've needed tiny little elements, you know, for um, little pieces of designs and I had to use like a whole piece and I don't want to use that. I want to use the little tiny remnants and plus there's a lot of projects that you can do um, even with a pair of scissors and um, vinyl, just quick little things and I like to use my scraps for that. Okay, so let's go ahead and start um, weeding all of this out. is weeded out and now what we need to do is take a pair of scissors and just cut away um, the different elements making sure that you keep together anything um, that should be so for instance be nice is one design I beg your is another design blame is by itself um, and here roots is by itself I will and then each of these are going on to our little garden stakes and so we'll cut out each of those individually Okay, so now they're all cut out and I have my transfer tape. And so what we're going to do is I'm gonna cut a piece of transfer tape and start moving these onto transfer tape. Some people say you can't reuse transfer tape. I reuse it all the time. So I'm gonna cut out one that's kind of, you know, on the longer side and then I'll cut out some small ones and we'll pick all of these up and move them over to our materials. Now, one more thing that you need to do before you move these to your surfaces. So if you have something like this flower pot, you want to use alcohol and clean it so that your vinyl sticks to it really well. Okay, so I'm just gonna get a little bit of alcohol and just clean up these areas because a lot of times they'll have a lot of dust and stuff on them. So I'm just gonna clean each of my surfaces, so my flower pot and let this dry. I'm gonna clean my trowel and I'm also going to do the birdhouse and we'll just get everything prepared. Okay, I'm gonna start with um, the design Blame It On My Roots. So I have a piece of um, transfer tape, so I'm just gonna peel it away from the edge. I'm gonna place that down on my first piece, which is lame. And then we're gonna use a brayer um, to make sure that it's on there really well. <laughs> Upside down. We're gonna uh, make sure that that's on there really well in all the little crooks and crannies. And I used to use a scraper, but you know, once I got my brayer, candidly, it works so much better um, that I stopped using my scraper, except for on like maybe curved things. Okay, so now one of the things that I have found that whenever you're using um, the smart material, it takes a little bit more work to get the design up with with the transfer tape. I mean, it's not bad, but um, just warning you guys, you're gonna have to maybe put a little more effort into it. Um, just peeling that back and getting your design up. I always work at an angle. I find that that um, works best, getting it off of the tape. Okay, so there we go. So we have the word blame. So what I wanna do is I wanna bring in my um, pot Okay, and so now this is really all just, you know, eyeballing it because I'm going to have the word blame and then I'm going to have it on my and then roots will be below it. So you just wanna make sure that you know how big, you know, roughly your design is going to be um, and then you're able to somewhat place it center. This is another reason I like the grids on my transfer tape. Okay, so let's just see if we can and by the way, I'm working on my glass uh, cutting mat. I love using this. Now, with this being ceramic, I might have to be a little more ginger with it, um, but I really like my glass mat. Um, it just keeps, it protects my table and makes sure that everything, um, you know, is square. You know what I mean? I'm just put a little piece of fabric underneath it just to make sure that I don't, you know, damage my um, mat in any way. So I use my brayer. 
sure that we have that down really, really good. And then when you pull off transfer tape, you always want to take it at an angle. Voila, look how good that came out. Okay, huh, and I'm actually really excited about the colors. I wasn't sure, even though we did it in Cricut Design Space, you know, put it on the on the color, um, you know, on the black. I, I wasn't sure how it was gonna turn out, but I'm really digging it. So let's move it over to the side and pick up our next one. So I'm gonna blame it on my roots. So grab that, use the brayer. Okay, and then we will pull off our design. There we go. Okay, and so it on my kind of tucks up a little bit under blame. I'm gonna work that in with my fingers. Now this is not smart vinyl, this one isn't the green, so it tends to pick up and go on just a little bit uh, easier. And then we'll peel at an angle. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do is go ahead and pick up the word roots. And I would suggest just, you know, using your grids as much as you can. Again, this is, I really like using my glass mat Okay, put a little pressure on it. Then we're gonna go from an angle. Now we have roots. Okay. Use our brayer. Oh my goodness, guys, I'm, I'm really, really, really in love with this one. Okay. There we go, ta-da! Okay, so I think it turned out really, really great. All right, let's move on to the next something. Okay, so next up, we're gonna do Bless This Nest on this cute little birdhouse. I'm so excited about hanging it um, outside. I have a thing for birds and bird feeders and bird houses, so I'm really excited about doing this, and I'm going to actually coat this um, with a spray, hoping that it will, you know, not, the vinyl won't come off. This is permanent vinyl, um, but I thought I would coat it as well just because it's gonna be outdoors. Okay, so let's go ahead and take our transfer tape. We'll get that onto our design. Okay, so bless this nest. And remember guys, I just um, made this up myself. Um, so there's nothing you know special to this. You can just go into Cricut Design Space. It's just font, so it doesn't cost a thing for you to do something really, really cute like this. Okay, so now we want to um, put this onto our birdhouse. So I know you can't see it from the top down angle very well, but I'll flip it over in a second. So I wanna center it above the little hole, the little nest area. Okay, so now I have that down. I'm just going to pull out the bubbles with my fingers. Now one thing, whenever you're using vinyl um, and transfer tape like this, if you have a curved something, this isn't very much, so I think this is going to be fine, but if it's more curved, you can always snip um, little cuts into your transfer tape and it will help it to mold around, you know, things that are curved really, really strongly. Okay, so what we wanna do is we'll take our brayer. Okay, and let's see if we have it down well enough. And I did clean the surface with um, alcohol. And there we go. Nice, it came off really, really well the first time. Super cute, okay. So now that we have our little birdhouse and we have our one of our pots, I think let's move on and put something on to the trowel. Now I am putting this in as a gift, so I'm actually going to put something on this part of the trowel um, or the little garden shovel, but 
you know, this, I don't anticipate them using it. So if you anticipated them using it, you might want to do some sort of a small, like little monogram or something, you know, on a different um, part of the shovel. Okay, so next step, we're gonna do these little garden stakes. And I'll be honest with you guys, I this, this is where it all started. <laughs> the little garden stakes is where it all started. So what I wanna do is I want to take um, some of my little wording and I'm going to put on my transfer tape. Now with these, um, it's best if you really use the uh, lines so that you can you know, make sure that you're getting everything straight and level. Okay, so we'll use this brayer and then just like before we're just going to go at an angle and pull that design up it's a little bit harder to do because it wants to rock back and forth but i actually think these are really really good for a dollar i mean three of these for a dollar was really a good deal whoops okay and if that happens guys it's no big deal just put it back down and go over it one more time. Fantastic. So I'm gonna do all of the rest of these and then I'm going to spray them um, with a clear coat so that they weather you know, outdoors even better. Now this is a permanent vinyl, but this little guy has not been treated, the little wooden skewer um, or the little wooden garden stake. So I'm going to coat the entire thing um, so that hopefully it will last not only this season, but future seasons. Okay, so they're all together, and I'll be honest with you guys, I'm loving my little Bless This Garden and my strawberries. I'm excited to put these out in my little garden and watch everything grow. And by the way, I'm going to be using um, this. Um, it's a clear resistant acrylic coating. I'm going to be putting that on all of these. It's moisture resistant, and I'll link this up down below. I think I got it at Lowe's, um, but this is great for those outdoor projects. Okay, so I'm gonna move these out of the way and do one more flower pot. Um, and I'm going to um, put this one on the white one. And so I want to um, put on the I Beg Your Garden. <laughs> I just love this one so, so much. So I'm going to use the um, transfer tape and just do the same process that I did before. And so now I'll have two flower pots, all of my little garden stakes, my um, trowel or my garden shovel, and then my little birdhouse. And I'm gonna give some of these away and I'm gonna keep some. So I hope you guys enjoyed the projects that I made today. And I hope you guys uh, might give these a whirl. Don't forget everything is down below and you can grab these SVGs in the shop.